hello everybody. Good to see you. Glad you're here. Uh, we are continuing to uh, swell and grow a little bit here. This is great. Well, yeah. You know? No, I <laughs> didn't, I didn't mean that. I don't no. Know. <laughs> We don't Everybody's want to trying to lose the COVID-19 <laughs> now. Hello we, to we the all outside. We have work to do right now, right? Hello to those outside and, of course, those watching online, online. today. We're excited. We're going to do a message together and share a little bit. And she was reading me what she's been working on, and I said, that text is perfect with what God has put on my heart. And I had been struggling to uh, really uh, find a, a text that really kind of encapsulated what I felt like the Lord wanted to say, so uh, yeah, I'm I've, excited. So I've, take us there, Colossians I've, chapter one. Yeah, take and your I, I've read it in Ephesians. I've read it now. I'm in Colossians, and Paul is still talking about this divine mystery in uh, Colossians chapter one. I think I will pick up like at verse 26 this time. This is the Passion translation. Yeah, but you can follow along in any translation. Colossians one verse 26. And he said, and Paul says this: There is a divine mystery. I don't know about you, but I like mysteries, so. There's the divine mystery. And then it says, a secret surprise. That's even better, right? That has been concealed from the world for generations, but now it's being revealed, unfolded, and manifested hmm, for every holy believer to experience. Living within you, so he goes on to explain it, so get this, he's gonna talk about the divine mystery, the secret surprise, and here it is. In verse 27, he says, living within you is the Christ who floods you with the expectation of glory. The mystery of Christ embedded within us becomes a heavenly treasure chest of hope filled with the riches of glory for his people, and God wants everyone to know it. I just, I just, love, I don't know, I don't just keep trying to wrap my mind around the meaning, the meaning of this divine mystery, this, this secret, this secret that's a surprise that is unfolding, yes. like it's still happening. Being revealed. And I, and I believe like it, it keeps happening and, and revelation more and more and more. The things that we have today that they didn't have then, I believe, I believe that everything in God keeps increasing and our knowledge keeps evolving in our understanding right. of who Christ is and the experience of him. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it, it is a secret surprise that had been held for generations. So take yourself back to when this was written. So this would have been just a little time after uh, the days of Jesus. And uh, so a couple of decades, uh, potentially. And um, Paul is writing a letter mm -hmm. uh, to the church here. But the, don't think church like building. Think church like collection of people that are meeting in homes and temple courts or wherever they can meet, sometimes down by the riverbank. And uh, they're learning how to follow Christ. Christ has died, uh, has come back from the dead, have been raised from the dead, and has ascended to heaven. The Holy Spirit has come, and now we're a couple of decades down the road. He's writing to say this mystery, which you've heard about, actually has been revealed, mm -hmm. and he's saying is embedded in, in, in their hearts. In us. Yeah. Now, what just hits me with all of this is like we on the earth like this this realm of reality this physical realm of reality that we're in is like this place a privileged place if you will of a divine encounter where we humans experience god and thereby awaken more and more uh we become awake spiritually our beings wake up to that divine. This is the work that Jesus did for us. So he comes uh, fully God and expresses his love for us, faces everything that we could possibly face, even more suffering than we can imagine and carrying the cross, comes through that example and then says, follow me. Yes. Right? And so here we come and Paul is suffering himself in this well, passage. The opening, I didn't start with the opening section. Uh, it's titled Divine Mystery. And maybe in your whatever version you have as well, it might, the, it starts in verse 24. And it's just, it starts with the divine mystery, but it starts out saying, 
I can even celebrate the sorrows I have experienced on your behalf, for as I join with you in your difficulties, it helps you to discover what lacks in your understanding of the sufferings Jesus Christ experienced for his body, the church. Some people think about God and it's all fear. And the way in which they interact with God and, and spirituality, it's through fear. Others, it's through, oh, I've got to serve, I've got to work, I've got to do something to earn God's favor. Others, it's like, well, if I do this, then God does that, and we've got a good transaction thing going. That's not at all what Paul is saying, right? He's saying there is this mystery that's embedded within you that you are to live in this divine and I think the reason why even he, he starts here with talking about suffering is it because suffering also is this incredible mystery that we just don't get. Like, why am I going through this? Why did I get this diagnosis? That's why part of the suffering. Why did I suffer this thing? But part of Christ, we are in Christ. For one thing, we're in solidarity in the suffering with him. But even I honestly believe your experience, the things that you go through here, the painful things that happen to you are actually part of Christ's suffering. It's a part of the cross. We are so intertwined with him and who he is that even your suffering is a part of his suffering. What, so what you go through has such value and such purpose. It is not meaningless suffering. It is a part of the suffering of Christ. And when you see it that way, it's, you're less likely to actually be bitter about what you've gone through because you realize like the solidarity of Christ with you in it. And you are, I think so, so much uh, the revelation that is here mm -hmm. is, is like screaming at us, you are not separate. Right. He's with you. You are not separate from one another and you are not separate from God. Right. You're so not. So there's this new dimension then. So it's not fear. It's not working for God. It's, it's not quid pro quo. God does this, I do that. It's this abiding. Yes. It's his abiding presence within us, which makes all of the difference. Now, sometimes the, we feel separate. We feel, uh, and, and I, I think a lot of things tell us that we are separate, but the truth is we are not separate. <laughs> In humanity, we're not separate. In God, we're not separate. I mean, us. his divine fingerprints are on all creation yes. and on all humanity. So to actually think that you are separate from God's creation is nothing but so a delusion. Let me translate it. <laughs> Somebody watching online may be having this there to say, you guys have no idea. I've been so far from God. I haven't even thought about God. I've been running from God. Whatever their story may be, 30, 40, even yeah. 50 years. And what she's saying is so true. He's right there with you. He, and this divine my mis mystery, this secret surprise is you were here on earth in this privileged place to encounter him. To, this is where to we, meet him. we are to experience and yes. encounter yes. God. And the unfolding, we talk about it here on like this macro scale of like unfolding throughout history. Well, there but there's the micro scale of un unfolding and the revelation that manifests and become in your own life there's that will happen. Two main blockages. And they're both in the mind. So she's addressing them, but I want to just call them out. One is loneliness. So your mind would tell you you're all alone. No one knows what you're going through. And it, it is possibly true that no human being might know uh, what you're going through. But you are not alone because God is with you and he knows what you're going through. The second, though, that's also in the mind is distraction. Yes. So some people have a plan to get rid of the loneliness, to get rid of the feeling of loneliness or feeling empty or feeling. So you work to distract yourself. Right. The mind works overtime to distract. But I, I, I think ideally, yes, we try to distract ourselves. We try to cope. We do our things to try to keep from thinking about it. But what the, the ultimately, the, what you want to do is wake up. Come out of the delusion, come out of the dream, wake up and realize, wait a minute, God created him. I, in, I, you know, I'm in his being, I live and move. And, and all we, it, it, to be outside of that or to think you're outside of that is nothing but the resistance of the mind and the mind resists the truth. So let me read this quote. To illustrate what she just said, 
a man who lived a couple of hundred years after Jesus said these words, St. Augustine, he said, late have I loved you, beauty so very ancient and so ever new. Late have I loved you, you were within, but I was without. In other words, it took him a while to get within. It took him a while to figure out that it is God in the inner life. This is a, uh, St. Augustine struggled with uh, all kinds of sin in his confessions. You can pick them up in Barnes and Noble. It's a, it's a wonderful uh, historical read to see his struggle with sexuality and other things. But he's saying all along, and I'm late to the party. I'm late waking up. So even if you're in your 70s or 80s right now and you think, I don't have the physicality to serve God or I'm not young or whatever, you're thinking about it the wrong way because you still are a habitation for the divine presence. Yes. To house this mystery. You're not the one person on the earth that wasn't created by God. <laughs> you know, you're not. <laughs> you know, we all are. It, it is just the waking up and realizing, wow, God knows me. And he's been trying to wake me up. These people talking out here today, this, we're trying to, to bring ourselves, even, even if you are a believer, you're, we're still trying to even awaken more and more to realize we're not separate. So here's what Darla and I have learned. From each other. If, you're, if, if you are, let's say, let's say your spouse drug you here right. and you're not listening and you can't hear any of this, it's okay. At some point, the suffering in this life will hit you so hard, you have to wake up. And you think about what's, what's happening, and God is there. He introduces himself there. He's been patient. Yeah. As far as you want to stay away from God, you're welcome to do that. But when you're ready to oh, I think open about, up. When you say that, it just hits me like the accumulation of pain in the human race, the accumulation of pain in our nation, even our very country. I think, God, can we just wake up? And realize, can we just awaken to the fact that God is and that He is divine, and we were created in this divine image that is and meant to be reconciled to, be yes. to Him and to one another? I mean, how much more pain has to go on? And which, right. for me, I've told Him, I begin to see sin right. is creating pain. Right. The creation of pain for yourself and right. the creation of pain for others. Right. That is sin. And God doesn't want us to create any more pain for others or ourselves. That's well said. I agree with all of that. I absolutely agree with that. It is this place. Sin is simply trying to find a substitute for God's presence inside of you. Whatever it is, put any label on it, distraction, whatever, whatever vocabulary word you need to attach to it. Coping. The reality is that he wants... Uh, you and him to be together in this inner space, in this inner place. Uh, and that's how we, so the Tower of Babel in Genesis was humans trying to construct the tower to God. They were going to climb up to God and all of that. We know how that went, right? And their language gets confused. But then uh, even the golden calf, when they're coming out of bondage in Egypt, they're frustrated because they're wanting a plan. They want to work a system. They want God to be encapsulated in something they can understand, mm -hmm. get rid of the mystery. We understand. So they make so a they religion. Make a religion. So they put a calf together, and we know how that went. And then the tabernacle comes, and then the temple comes, and it all goes destroyed. But Jesus says, There's this amazing news. I want you to go and wait in the upper room. I want you to go mm -hmm. to Jerusalem and wait until the Spirit, the, this gift, that I'm going to uh, pray the Father will send. And what does he send? Yeah. Not a miracle working way maker. We're going to tear down some Roman. We're, none of that. What does he send? He sends the paracletos or the comforter. The Holy Why? Spirit. He knows you need comfort in this life. Walking this life will be hard. Going through the sufferings that you're going through will be difficult. But you need God's closeness. He's already provided a way to get you through this day. Matthew chapter 6 Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will have enough troubles of its own. In this moment, in this time, in this space today, take in what I have for you. You know, it takes us to that, that uh, theology that really we're at a time in history that we really need to correct it and wheel it back in because I feel, I feel like I receive the message a lot uh, myself, and I'm sure you did as well in different places, but that Jesus suffered and died for us. 
He suffered all that pain so we don't have to. Right. And mm-hmm. that is not no. uh, not true. <laughs> no, it's not true. Uh, you, otherwise, Paul, yeah. otherwise the man we're reading here must have been a horrible sinner. Yeah. And all the apostles who after the Holy Spirit comes, after they're seeing miracles, after healings are flowing through their hands when they pray for people, and yet they themselves suffered the most horrid lives and deaths right. that you can imagine. And so, were, were they not Christians? So they experienced the cross, yes. if you will, which tells us that we also will experience the cross as well because life has joys and sorrows. So we're going to experience the cross as well. But everything I read and hear, this divine mystery, like it's being unfolded and it's being uh, becoming revealed and manifested in our lives. It's no but longer yet, hidden. But yet he starts this, ch- this section by talking about the sufferings of the body of Jesus Christ, our sufferings, and then somehow I do think and believe it is through our sufferings oh, there comes the revelation uh, of, of the cross phrase. and the understanding yes. of the cross, which I feel like this is, this is what we're really bad at suffering. We don't want to do it. We wanna, we don't wanna, and when it happens to us, we even deny it happened to us. Well, there is no cross in my life. No, that did not. Those, those things that happened in my past, we just deny that they happened. But what I'm learning through psychology and the science of the brain and all this stuff is by denying what has happened to you in the past and the accumulation of pain in the race or your, your nation, whatever, ethnicity, you, to deny that it does not do you any good. You're denying your cross. For me to deny the things that happened is to not accept what is which sounds like brutally honest, we're gonna have to accept what is. And then go here, but even the roots of our nation, we have to accept what is, not that it was ever right, not that it should have ever happened. But even in our, okay, that's macro, but even in our individual lives, the things that have happened to you, the horrible things in your family, to not accept what is, then you're just in denial and you're forced to cope find some coping mechanisms or some way to distract from your cross. And the cross doesn't work that way. It, it, the cross is a beautiful thing when you turn around and embrace the truth of what happened. And then there can be light in the darkness and, and it can dissipate the pain. But as long as we're unwilling to face the facts of our own suffering, whether it's macro or micro in our lives, then we're just simply denying the cross. When Jesus plainly said, take up your cross and follow me. Don't leave it there in the dirt. Don't deny that it happened to you. Instead, embrace the suffering that has come. And when we will turn and embrace it as Christ's suffering as our own, then there's a wonderful work of resurrection life that can come out of it. We've got to quit avoiding denying, leaving, trying to get away from what can't be gotten away from. It just can't be. So there's a couple of takeaways here. I want to give you three. The first is this. Life's journey is often hard and lonely and difficult, right? But you you will have to face the internal things that have happened to you and by facing that, I think what we're saying is not relive it, right. but you, you acknowledge it. You acknowledge what you've been through. You acknowledge the divorce. You acknowledge this thing or that the thing losses. that have uh, mm-hmm. happened in your life, the mm-hmm. losses that have happened in your life. And when you do, you'll find the revelation, a greater revelation of who God is because he's in those things. He's in that pain and he's there to help you. Uh, move through that pain. I don't think you ever overcome some things, but you move through them, right? The other thing that I would just mention is that you can do things that make your struggle worse, and that's denial. That is just trying to um, uh, mentally shove it away. But when you embrace that, that's what worship is. You bring all that you are, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and you bring that to the Lord, the things that you may struggle with, the resentments, the, uh, even the hatred, you bring all of that, and then he somehow, the Spirit works in us to, to burn that off and to, to purify us. The second thing I would say is you never arrive in life because life is always moving. 
That's what happened at the Tower of Babel, the golden calf. They wanted to stop the moment, make it static. Let's stay here. Like if you hugged your uh, child this morning, that, that moment is already gone. Right. And you are now in, in this moment. And it's not a philosophical play. It is to say that life is a current. It's a, it's a river. Sometimes it moves faster than at other times. And I think it's our inability a lot of times to live present that causes a great deal of our suffering. You know, and we've talked about this in the past, but what happens is when we don't live present, like right now, live in this moment. But most of the time, our heads or our minds are out in the future worrying about and having anxiety about everything that might go wrong or that could go wrong. And we're trying to work things out that we may not even ever come to in the first place. But the worry keeps us from being able to live present. And then we have those things from the past that have happened to us that we ruminate in and, uh, and, and are not free of because we never embraced and even admitted and embraced the cross in them. So we're, they're still in our heads and they're tormenting us. So we're suffering from the past and we're suffering in, in about the future and we're not living present. Now I quoted the great theologian, St. Augustine, right? That he was saying, I'm waking up late to this. But let me quote another great theologian. Her name was Dory. She said, just keep swimming. <laughs> just keep swimming. Yeah. No matter how difficult it gets, just keep going. That life is challenging. Life is it's hard. It's a good thing because she didn't have a good memory, so she really couldn't. She struggled with memory loss. <laughs> Which might have been Short a good thing. Short-term memory loss. <laughs> she, yeah, she couldn't remember what happened. Grandparents now watching too much Disney, you can Absolutely. tell. Absolutely. So the third thing that I want you to walk away with today, and we had to wrap this up and the band are going to come back, is that God is in you and around you all the time, right? So I want to I talk about the Holy Spirit in a little bit different way and just uh, simply attach some... Uh, categorization to things you already know about the Holy Spirit. And I've done this through these uh, seven categories of which she's been making fun of me about. Uh, okay, but I'm just, my brain works. Uh, That's good, Professor Mike. Yes, I'm sorry for this. Number keep, one. Keep it simple. Number one, uh, <laughs> when, I, when, I walk, when I see some of the scriptures in the Bible, there are aquatic, aquatic, aqua, aquatic Water. metaphors and they talk about the spirit, rivers of living water, right? You, you'll, you'll find um, uh, he was brooding over the waters in creation. Uh, out, of, out of the abundance uh, of the, the heart, the mouth speaks, right? So we know that. So he says, but I will put in you rivers of living water, making a reference to actually a Jewish uh, uh, ritual tradition. Won't go into that. But it's this, this, the spirit is this wellspring coming up. Another one is audiological metaphors. So listen to this. A rushing mighty wind is talked about. Yeah. It's a spirit. You ever see the wind? No. But they heard it was like a rushing mighty wind. Or uh, they heard tongues. Uh, they heard people speaking in tongues that were, they had not learned in school. Uh, and um, um, people over here were like, I did learn that in school. I learned that from my family. I'm hearing these tongues. And these tongues are, and it's an audiological uh, way to think about the Holy Spirit uh, yeah. linguistically. Yeah. All right, stay with me. All right, I know it's... Well, you it's, know, what you're saying, these are all natural things. Yes. But what I'm, and I know we've got a couple more, but what I, w I want to just interject in here, very natural things. But what we're seeing is natural things empowered by the Spirit. Yes. So though it was wind, it becomes supernatural wind. Yes. Though it was water, it becomes like a supernatural. Yes. It's yes. empowered the by the Spirit. naturally supernatural. Well, here's agricultural. He said, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Or you have the fruit of the Spirit. See, it's like God is, so the golden calf and the, and the Tower of Babel, they're trying to figure God out and put it in. And, and we're seeing in the New Testament, especially this, this uh, broad reaching description of the Holy Spirit. Here's a couple of more, uh, fire is cleansing, right? This puritanical idea of fire is cleansing, like a field burned off, right? Uh, uh, or, or a reproductive, uh, that he gives new life. Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. Uh, um, another one is new wine, that the spirit is like wine, uh, filled to overflowing or atmospheric, uh, the, the actual, uh, a wind blowing where it will. So there's many more. So those seven, 
I just, I, I just wanted to paint a comprehensive, so you are not outside the reach of the Spirit. One of these ways in which the Spirit it, uh, connects with your heart and helps you supernaturally. So this reality in this world is where you and me and humanity are to encounter God in natural ways, but yet sometimes they're supernatural because the spirit empowers them. You know, you'll have, you can experience God through nature by just, you know, what is, but then there are those times you experience God in specific, personal, deep yeah. and intimate ways. I'm going to have Darla say a prayer over us. The band are going to hear it. Why don't you stand with us? I want them to play a song that just creates a moment for you. This is really why we come to church. I mean, we, we come, we see each other. We have yeah. our, our children are in the back and are hearing the word and all of that. But, but greater than that is this collection of people that have come in and many, many, many in here suffering. We have several uh, new, new widows that are walking that out and are, are uh, a part of our congregation that are just hurting so desperately today and need the Spirit in, in an unusual way, the way that most of you wouldn't need that. But the Spirit knows exactly what you need. And so I want Darla to, to just pray over us, pray that our hearts would dilate, that, that even, if, even if you're in your 80s, I want you to open up and receive what the Lord has for you today. And just say too that bear in mind our minds, our heads are resistant. And I think we're really resistant to God, we can be very resistant to God in our thoughts, you know? And in order really, now God can bowl you over, I know that he can, but in order for you, if you really want to encounter God here in this reality, you have to begin to accept what is, accept what is created by God. It is what is. This is all of me, God. Yeah. Right? And, and Surrender means non-resistance. The mind is resistance. So in order to quit fighting with God, to quit resisting what is the reality, you have to get to the place of non-resistance, which is simply is surrender when there's no more resistance. And you just go, you know what? I'm open. I op I'm open, God. If there is a God, I'm open to that. So Lord, right now, God, I know that we have a mix of people in the room and some know you and some don't. Some are awake and some are asleep. Some are in delusion and, and unaware. God, we need the reality in this world of encountering you and that privilege, Lord, of encounter. So God, we open our hearts to the possibility that we could have been wrong, <laughs> that we might be wrong if we formed an opinion that, that you're not. God, help us realize that we're not separate from you today. And when we wake in our hearts, unfold, bring the revelation and manifestation of the truth of Christ to each of us, Lord. I pray that over every life in this room. Now let's listen. Amen. Yes, let the worship team lead us and follow them, sing along with them, or have that moment with the Lord, and then Pastor Michael's going to come close the service after that.
Thank you this morning. You are good. You are so, so good. The fact that I was able to just, just be with the kids this morning and to be able to pray with them this morning and to see kids lift their hands to receive you as their Lord and Savior. You are so good, God. You are so good to us that you paid the price for us so we could have the freedom from our sin so we could have salvation. And I thank you for that, God, this morning. And I pray that every single person in here this morning, as they go through their day, as they wake up tomorrow, sometimes when we wake up, the day doesn't look the way that we want it to. But every day we can find a blessing that you have given us every single day. We can find the blessing that you died for us to be joyful each and every day. Because you are good. You love us unconditionally, even when we don't love you back. And I thank you for that. I thank you for that, God, this morning. And I pray, God, that we would just remember how good you are to us, how much you love us. And we thank you this morning. Everyone said, amen. So have a seat for a second. I almost said boys and girls, because I just ran from the kids' service. But I'm glad that I get the opportunity to be with you guys this morning. I don't always get to come up here. And so I cherish every moment that I get to spend with the adults. We just had an amazing time in the children's ministry and the service today. We've been in a series called Blessed, where we were looking through the Bible and looking at the blessings that God has for us. And today we were talking about salvation and we were looking at the story of the Ethiopian and how Philip had uh, had an encounter with him, was able to share with him, was able to decipher the words from the prophet Isaiah to him where it talked about Jesus dying on the cross for him and he received salvation right then in that moment because he was guided by the Holy Spirit. And so that's what we were talking this morning, that there's a lot of dangerous things in the world, right? But the most dangerous thing that we encounter is sin. But we have freedom from our sin. We have someone to save us from that. And so I'm not going to preach again this morning. That's not why I'm up here. <laughs> but I want to talk to you guys about a few things that's going on in the children's ministry. But first, we have a volunteer rally next week. And so what this is, this is a rally for people that have already been serving with us or anyone that wants to serve in children's ministry. This is for current volunteers and new volunteers. We have a rally next week, right after second service at 1230, that we're inviting you all to come out if you guys are interested in serving in children's. And so some of the areas that you can serve in is our check-in area, our preschool area, our kids service elementary, the one that I serve in, our tech team, and our worship team. We have our own kids worship team, and we're looking for some more people that can play instruments and sing and all that good stuff, but we're also looking for tech and all that. So if you're interested in volunteering, we have an awesome time in kids, right? We do. We have an awesome time, and it's a cool area to serve in the church. So if you would like to do that, be here next Sunday after second service at 1230. There's no excuse because we're also feeding you free food. So you can't be like, well, we got to go eat. No, we're giving you food. All right. And so that is next week in room 100, which is right behind this wall right here that I'm pointing to. That is room 100 off the hallway. All right. So I want to talk about a few things that are coming up in children's ministry because we want to make sure you guys know exactly what's going on. So the first thing we're going to talk about uh, is the first slide we're going to talk about is the, uh, the Kinder Music Play Date that is coming up on June 12th at 4.30. If you could throw this slide up there, the Kinder Music Play Date. This is for 
for nursery, preschool, elementary. This is a great way. I truly believe that the friendships that your kids make in church are the friendships that are going to last forever. My friends that I still have to this day are the ones I met in church. And so don't miss out on opportunities for your kids to hang out with other kids in fellowship. But parents, this is also an opportunity for you to hang out with other parents and be in community with other families. So that is coming up on June 12th, 430 to 530 here at the church. You can go on the church website, wsfirst.com forward slash events for more info. The next thing is I'm super excited about, I forgot to announce at first service and my wife kicked me for it. Next week, how many of you guys got preschoolers? Anybody got preschoolers in the room? Online? Starting next week, we have preschool back services here on the campus. We have not had them during COVID, but they are back starting next week. Both services, 9 and 11. That is something to cheer about. We have been wanting to bring back preschool for a while, but we were needing to get volunteers. Again, a reason to come to the volunteer rally because we need volunteers. And it is starting back next week. It's right here. If you, it, it, right after check-in, there's rooms right there where preschool will meet. You just bring, check your kids in next week and we will show you where to go. Now you can put up the wonderful slide of our summer events for WSF kids. And we have made it easy for you parents. Look at that thing in the middle. That is called a QR code. You can take out your phone right now and scan that and it'll take you to the event page of the website. Look, it's, I made it that easy for you guys. And this is where you can register for these events. The first thing we have coming up is a movie night on June 25th. It is free for the entire church. This isn't just for people that have kids. Anybody can come to this movie night. The kids department is just hosting it. So June 25th, a free movie night. We have on June 3rd, or sorry, July 3rd, our Sparkler 400 bike race. Your kids have bikes, right? And so we want to kick off the 4th of July weekend where we have a bike race that has different heats for different ages so your kids can compete with the, with the kids their age. It's awesome. We did it last year. The kids had so much fun. There's prizes for who comes in first. But the Sparkler 400 is here at the church. Church. So make sure you guys register for that. It's at 10 a.m. to 11.30. It's $5 per person. And so it's an awesome event. It's something we're going to do every year, the Sparkler 400. And so then we've got VBS, Vacation Bible School. I love vacation. It's like one of my favorite things we do all year. That is coming up July 12th through the 16th. It's $10 per kid. You can go online and register them. It is 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Monday through Friday. It is an awesome thing. This year our theme is Treasured which is like an Indiana Jones theme. And I'm so excited because that's my childhood. I can live out my childhood desire to be him on stage. So you guys want to, you want to bring your kids. It's going to be awesome. We have an awesome time at VBS every year. And the last thing, but not least, is Kids Camp. So Kids Camp is on July 25th through the 29th. You guys really did that. <laughs> they play this in kids church. I wasn't expecting it. It is Jurassic Camp. It's Jurassic Park themed. It's coming up on July 25th through 29th. This is a stay away camp. This is for rising third graders. So if your kids were in second grade this year, they can go. So rising third graders all the way up to sixth grade. Make sure you register online. You get your $50 deposit in because spots are going quickly. Very quickly. So make sure if your kids want to go. I always tell parents this and I'm not lying. First, parents will always tell me, my kid's not ready to go. Uh -uh. you're not ready to send your kids. It's not about your kids not ready to go. They want to go. You, you're having a hard time releasing them. But this is why I tell parents, wow, I got sound effects in like kids' church. But I always tell everyone, camp changes lives. Yeah! I see it every year. You don't want your kids to miss out on kids' camp. It truly changes lives. So make sure you go to the church website, you scan that code that was up there, or just go to wsfirst.com forward slash events. Sign your kids up for Kids Camp. I promise you it's going to be the highlight of their life for the summer. And so those are the events. That's what's happening. Make sure you guys, if you want to volunteer in Kids Church or anything in kids, next year, next year, next week is the volunteer rally. And again, we will see you guys later. Have a great week. Enjoy the rest of your week. You guys are dismissed. And you can see me in the foyer if you have any questions about volunteering.